Home Heating Cooling in Toledo, Ohio. Welcome back to another home diagnostic video from appliancevideo.com. Alrighty, today we're going to be working on a train system and we're going to do a preventative maintenance. Check operation in the cooling mode. Go ahead and turn it on. Alrighty, we're going to check out an air conditioner maintenance. So we're going to go ahead and shut the power off. First thing to do is check the filter, make sure it's clean. Might need a replace, but that one looks good. Pop this door open. Make sure the blower motor is clear. Bearings are good in it. Then we're going to go ahead and check, make sure all the electrical connections are nice and tight. Alright, and that completes this test for the blower and all the electrical connections. Now we're going to check the drain to make sure there's no obstruction. We're going to go ahead and put a T in here for a clean out so we can make sure the drains all get cleared properly. Let's go ahead and measure that out, make sure we're good. Clean that up real good. Make sure that this pass is clear so we don't get any drain issues during the season. Go ahead and pop that out. Dump a little bleach through there. We're going to go ahead and follow that through with some hot water. Make sure it comes out of the end and I can hear water running so we're good. Alrighty, we're working on a train XR13. First thing before we do anything, we need to shut the power off. It's 220 volts. Make sure we don't get electrocuted. Alrighty, first thing to do is check the refrigerant, the R410A system here. Remove the high side tap, cap and the low side cap. low loss fitting on here so I don't lose refrigerant. So we have a TXV system. So we need to check the sub cooling on the unit. We're going to power it up. We need 10 degrees of sub cool and this is going to require about 10 minutes of wait time. So on this 410A system in order to do a sub cool test we're measuring the liquid line temperature with a probe on the outside. That's a K probe going to a thermometer. And then we're checking our refrigerant pressure, for 410A. And then the inside line is the temperature, or the 410A, the pink scale is. And we are going to take the measurements. We are at 70 degrees, 55. We need 13 degrees of subcool on this unit. Let it stay and stabilize, and we'll be able to verify it's properly charged. Alrighty, so for the uh, subcool test, we are at on the R410A gauge, we're at 70 degrees. We're at 60 on a liquid line temperature, so 10 degrees of subcool, perfect. Alrighty, now we are going to check the electrical components in here. Of course, the power's off, we got the disconnect out. So the power's off still. So we are going to check our capacitor out. Before we doing so, we might want to make sure it has no charge to it. Discharge it because it holds a little bit of electricity and electrocute you. We're going to check the fan one and the compressors. Run capacitor. Put it over to microfarads. This should be a 40 and a 5 microfarad. So we have a 5 microfarad. So we're reading across from the common terminal and the fans wire that goes through the capacitor. Now we're going to read against the hermetic compressor and common again. And we are at 39.8 plus or minus 10%. That's still good. Hook the wires back up. Then we're going to go ahead and power the unit up and check the volts on it. the incoming power which is 248 we're going to make sure we don't have any loss across the contactor we're good there you can read the motor and the compressor amps it's at 4.8 you can read both legs move the 
same. Just making sure we don't get electrocuted. Just gotta reach in there with some insulated wire, bolt strips. Read the fan. It's at nine tenths of an amp. And then all the specs are on the other side of the unit where you can actually verify when it should be at high or low amps. We're going to go ahead and clean the condenser from all its cotton wood and grass. Alright. Power's off. Check the bearings on the motor. Make sure it spins free and there's no play. Lateral should have none. A little end play you'll always have. We can push it out from the way it came in, sometimes it gets cleaner easier. Make sure we don't bend the coils. Then the last thing we want to make sure after we do everything before we leave, make sure that cap's on nice and secure. So no Freon leaks out of it. And we're done. Thank you for watching another home video from appliancevideo.com.